Today, the biggest killer of children is not HIV or malaria, but pneumonia, killing nearly a million children under the age of five every year. In 2011, Kenya became one of the first African countries to add to existing immunization programs a powerful new weapon against pneumonia, the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. Here in the coastal town of Kalifi, scientists at the Wellcome Trust Kenya Medical Research Institute have been carrying out research to measure the impact of the vaccine. However, this is far from straightforward. There are many causes of pneumonia, and as Juliet Otieno, clinical research training fellow, explains, most diagnoses are based on clinical observations and so offer no clues as to the cause. We use the signs and symptoms that the children present with to decide whether or not we think this child is suffering from pneumonia. To get a more accurate idea of the precise cause requires facilities that are not normally available in a typical Kenyan hospital. You need a well-functioning lab with the ability to uh, reliably um, isolate pneumococcus from biological specimens, which we thankfully have here. Even so, determining the cause of pneumonia still requires some detective work. The most definitive approach involves placing a needle directly into the child's lung. To avoid this, the researchers are using far less invasive approaches. One involves sending field researchers out into the community to take swabs from healthy members of the population, chosen at random. Pneumococcus bugs live in the back of the nose of both healthy and sick people. So, by measuring their prevalence, it's possible to gauge their ability to spread, also known as carriage. If there is a reduction in the carriage of this bacteria in the community, then by extension there will be a reduction of disease in the wards because it's the carry that precedes disease. This was evident within six months of the vaccine being introduced. What they saw was a reduction in the carriage of the strains targeted by the vaccine. Another way to gauge the vaccine's impact is to look at cases of X-ray proven pneumonia, which in previous studies have been shown to be more likely to be caused by pneumococcal bacteria. However, this too comes with challenges because the child can be too frail to be moved to the x-ray department or they may be so sick they may die before they can be scanned. Despite such challenges, after the vaccine was introduced, there was indeed a reduction in the number of cases of x-ray proven pneumonia and by a similar degree to reductions found during clinical trials. Perhaps the strongest indication of the vaccine's positive impact comes from studying invasive pneumococcal disease or IPD. This is where, in extreme cases, the infection spreads from the lungs into the blood. Every day, each and every child who comes with uh, signs of respiratory disease, we do blood culture, or if anybody has come with signs of meningitis, we also do a lumbar puncture to see whether there's any invasive disease. Prior to the introduction of the vaccine, they used to see about 40 to 50 cases of IPD every year. This was just the tip of the iceberg, representing only the most extreme cases. However, now there has been a significant reduction in the number of IPD cases caused by strains targeted by the vaccine. When we introduced the vaccine, the, the number of cases fell quite rapidly. We have seen one case in two years. So that's a very dramatic change in the epidemiology of the disease. Essentially, we're at the point where we, we think that that disease is controlled. It's, it's almost gone. 